and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. We thank you for joining us. Let's begin with the Federal Executive Council meeting. Nigeria's Vice President Professor Yemi Okimbajo is presiding over a virtual meeting of the Federal Executive Council which began at about 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll bring you details of that in subsequent bulletins. Moving on now. Borno State Governor Professor Babagana Umara Zulum has been decorated by President Mohamed Bazoum of the Republic of Niger with the country's second order national honor, the Grand Officer Dance Lodge, which is equivalent to Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCON, in Nigeria's ranking of national honors. Mohamed Goni reports. The was performed in Zinda as part of events lined up by the government of Niger Republic to celebrate the country's Independence Day. President Mohamed Bazoum said he was honoring Governor Zulum after monitoring the governor's courage, sincere fight against Boko Haram, deep concern on the plight of Borno citizens taking refuge in parts of Niger Republic, which Governor Zulum has visited a number of times, offering support and steadily evacuating and resettling the refugees in new houses built in Borno State. This is the first time a Nigerian president will honor a Nigerian governor with the country's second highest national award. Governor Zulum said the honor will not make him relent in his devotion towards Borno people. President Bazou later invited Governor Zulum to accompany him to commission 138 kilometer Zindar Road project and a 22 megawatts power project also in Zindar. Nigeria Republic annually celebrates Independence Day on the 3rd of August with festivals and tree planting. <laughs> Mohamed Goni, NTA News. Normalcy seems to have returned in Bobi Village Road, earlier blocked by kidnappers, as the road is now open for vehicular movement. Some of the vehicles attacked by the kidnappers were seen around the crime scene with their window glasses all shattered. Unconfirmed reports say the drivers of some of the vehicles and some passengers were taken away by the kidnappers. Meanwhile, motorists were stranded for several hours, taking refuge in Bobi Village, 50 kilometers away from Kuntagora local government area of Niger State, following activities of kidnappers on the road. NTA News observed that the road is virtually empty with no vehicular movement from both sides of the road. An eyewitness told NTA News that the kidnappers numbering over 100 on motorbikes traversed the neighboring villages before blocking the road. The federal government is expanding the amnesty program for Niger Delta X agitators beyond the monthly stipends to enable them become trained entrepreneurs. At a partnership meeting with Akwaibom State Government, Interim Administrator of the Presidential Amnesty Program, Colonel Milan Diku, retired, said the program is now focused on training, employing, and mentoring the ex agitators. Clement Barakui has details. Established in 2009, the Presidential Amnesty Program aims to restore peace to the then troubled Niger Delta region. Twelve years down the line, the program is now refocused to empower the Niger Delta youths on maritime transportation, maritime security, and food security. We are looking out for big business concerns where our people can be trained, who will pay for the training, but with the understanding that they will be employed and mentored. For the Aquabum State Governor, Domi Manel, there are endless opportunities in the maritime sector that the program can catch in on. There are various ways we can check where we can help our people and it will really also help us. And um, I think uh, it's the right time we sit back, look at some of these programs that we designed to help our people so that we can actually uh, see how we can just redefine the direction that we need to go. To achieve its target, the Presidential Amnesty Program is scaling up the Iboma Apprenticeship Program for the benefit of the ex-agitators. In Uyo, Clement Barakui, NTA News. The promotion and protection of the health of Nigerians will never be taken for granted as government will continue to enlighten citizens on information that will safeguard their health. 
This is coming from stakeholders at the launch of the sensitization campaign by National Agency for Food, Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC. The report. The campaign, which kick-started with eight states of Sokoto, Kebi, Bochi, Kwara, Lagos, Ogun, Rivers, and Edo, is to address the dangers of buying medicine from hawkers, abuse of nicotine, and self-medication among youths, dangers of using sniper to preserve any type of food, benefit of exclusive breastfeeding, among others. The expectation of the Director General, National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAPTAC, Professor Mojishola Adeye, is that the country would get rid of menace of falsified medical products or wholesome food, corrosive cosmetics, poorly packaged water, and other substandard regulated products. We have lessons learned that we're going to gather that will help us in terms of scaling up. So all the states will be reached, and this program is going to involve the grassroots through our consultant and our staff. The National Assembly commended NAPDAC for its drive to safeguard the country from unhealthy products while pledging its support. Not only about campaigning and making people aware, but it's also to ensure that products that are produced are rapidly tested and uh, certified. And one of those ones is, uh, which all Nigerians are aware, is uh, the issue of COVID and the COVID vaccines. Cannot overlook the importance of better communication in providing information for people of any country to have a choice on how to live their life. And I think that is the basis of this. The sensitization program, which is targeting the media, youth, and civil society organizations, road transport workers and employers, as well as schools and market men and women, will last from August to September 2021. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. The National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, says there is no case of COVID-19 amongst the Youth Corps members or staff participating in the ongoing NYSC orientation course across its 37 camps in the country. Director of Press and Public Relations Unit of the NYSC, Adenike Adeyemi, stated this in an exclusive interview with correspondent Olai Kaoju following a report from one of the dailies that 109 core members tested positive to COVID-19 in six orientation camps. Since the reopening of NYC orientation camps in the face of COVID-19, the authorities say there has been strict adherence to COVID-19 protocols where prospective core members and staff of the camp community undergo compulsory COVID-19 tests. As a reporter visiting the NYC orientation camp on assignment, I was also subjected to COVID-19 tests. The, the after rapid test takes about um, 15 minutes. And it's after certified negative that a prospective core member is allowed into camp to commence his or her registration. Being a scheme that prioritizes the welfare and security of youth core members and staff, it says the publication in one of the dailies, NYC camps, on red alert is false and misleading. So when you have a call-up letter, you are a prospective core member because you have that instrument. But you are not a core member until you are admitted into the camp. After your papers have been examined and your COVID-19 status decided. Therefore, we still reiterate and emphasize that there is no positive COVID-19 core member within any of the 37 camps nationwide. The scheme urges all relevant bodies to disregard the false information and should not panic, as adherence to COVID-19 protocols is non-negotiable. Online Kaoju, NTA News. <laughs> Update from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control says figures of the confirmed cases in Nigeria is now 175,264 with 165,122 discharged 
and 2,163 deaths. New cases as of Tuesday midnight is 505 in states, with details indicating Lagos 273, Rivers 83, Oyo 45, Ondo 22, Cross River 18, Kaduna 13, and Ogun, Gombe, each with 10 cases. Others are FCT 8, AKT 7, Delta 6, Bayelsa 3, Edo 2, and Niger State with one case. The NCDC has affirmed that about 80% of COVID-19 cases in Akwa Ibom State currently is the Delta variant. Hence, the state government's renewed vigor to have awareness on the need for continued caution and vigilance by citizens, promising to secure enough doses of COVID-19 vaccine. The state government has also reactivated all mechanisms to ensure compliance to other preventive protocols. Ifama Aikoje reports. The NCDC's recent releases show a bomb recording exponential increase in the number of new cases of coronavirus, ranking the second highest in Nigeria as at the last count. So there's a real wave here upon us, and uh, we cannot deny that fact. I don't want people to, uh, I don't want people to feel all is well. All is well, all right, we're all alive, but we must be aware to take steps to protect ourselves. Worried about the alarming rate of the spread of the deadly Delta variant, the people are reminded of the need to ensure adherence to the precautionary measures. The government is uh, setting up uh, a monitoring team to ensure that uh, people adhere to the COVID-19 guidelines. It's our fervent belief that with the awareness programs that we are doing and uh, all the advice being provided, that people would adhere to this advice, but where they don't, the monitoring team shall um, go around the state to be able to enforce the compliance. Aquipum people are therefore advised to take advantage of the fully functional state molecular laboratories for their COVID-19 tests and more importantly to report any suspicious symptoms to the nearest COVID-19 facility. In Rio, Ifoma Aihuchi, NTN News. You're watching Nationwide. Let's now join Ruth in Lagos for more reports. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Lydia. The Senate Committee on Housing is set to expedite action on budgetary approval for the rehabilitation of dilapidated Federal Ministry of Works and Housing Complex at Tafa Balewa Square in Lagos. Chairman, Senate Committee on Housing, made this known during an inspection of housing projects in Lagos. Essie Wamaka reports. The Senate Committee on Housing, led by its chairman, Sam Egu, expressed shock and disbelief at the level of infrastructural decay at the Office of the Federal Controller of Housing at Tafawa Balewa Square. They also lamented the state of disrepair of the infrastructure housing of the federal government power status in Lagos. Federal Controller of Housing, Sarah Alawade, told the Senate Committee that the ministry has continued to grapple with challenges of dealing with land grabbers who encroach on federal government property. Speaking with journalists after the inspection, Senator Sam Ego assured that the National Assembly would ensure that provisions are made for repairs when the next budget estimates are presented before the Senate. What we have seen today and the Federal Secretariat is so appalling. It's uh, on, 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 on head of that uh, Federal Secretary will be looking like an abandoned property. And that was why we promised them that since we have seen the state of the building, that uh, we're going to do the needful if they present the proposal to us for the renovation. Lawmakers expressed satisfaction with the quality of construction of the housing estate in Shongo Tedo under the supervision of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. In Lagos, SC Owamaka, NCA News. The Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors is teaching professionals that the key to reducing abandoned and uncompleted projects across the country is found in well-researched and thoroughly conducted construction estimating. At the opening of a two-day workshop in Lagos, the national president of the institute, 
Abato said delivering prompt values to Nigerians should be the mandate for the construction of any project. Michael Olale has details. There are 56,000 abandoned projects worth 12 trillion naira scattered across the six geopolitical zones of the country. This is according to a 2019 survey of the Chartered Institute of Project Management of Nigeria. Our dear president. Making reference to why these projects exceeded their regional contract frame, the Nigeria Institute of Quantity Surveyors affirms that it is not basically due to corruption, but failure to conduct precise construction estimating in an era of price fluctuation. And as a prelude to the induction of close to 100 new members, the Institute is of scaling the skills of practitioners. So that's our own contribution to really ensuring that uh, resources are well computed, accurately and precisely assessed. And then now clients should now be happy because they will now get value for money through our intervention. Key players here recommended price control and adherence to contractual duration as ways of maneuvering around the challenges of price fluctuation. Once you sign a contract, then the, 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 the client and the contractor have to obey the, the conscience of contract. Although successful project delivery and value addition are paramount to these quantities of years, but the mandate of the two-day workshop is to deepen the tools and techniques of estimating. Sustainability has come to stay. That, and then when you are building in a, a component of sustainability into your project, we need to have the capacity to integrate it into building estimate or engineering estimate. Customer satisfaction is the hallmark of any enterprise. Hence, the Institute wants new members to comply with ethical standards as a sign of assurance that services will be delivered promptly. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. And from Lagos, we head to the seat of the Caliphate, Sokoto, where Asmao is standing by with stories from that zone after the break. Do stay with us. Green youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Officers to the following specially packaged training programs. Basic directing techniques, date 2nd August to 27th August 2021, four weeks. New technologies, optical fiber, IT technologies, automation storage management and wireless technology. Date 9th August to 13th August 2021, one week. Transmitter operation and maintenance. Date 23rd August to 27 August 2021, one week. Advanced broadcast accounting and auditing. Date 30th August to 24th September 2021, four weeks. Emotional intelligence for workplace efficiency. Date 6th September to 17th September 2021, two weeks. The course fee for the four-week course is 100,000 naira per participant. The fee for the two-week course is 80,000 naira. While the course fee for the one-week course is 60,000 naira only, accommodation inclusive. The venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA TV College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Joss. For more inquiries, please call 0803-079-5335 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, Joss, training you to be the best you want to be. We are Star Times, the most affordable digital pay TV platform with the widest signal coverage in Nigeria. Dedicated to bringing the best TV entertainment around the world to your screen. 
From Hollywood to Bollywood to Nollywood, we offer the most affordable subscription. Enjoy over 75 channels for as low as 1,700 Naira, like Nadio Wild, BBC, ESPN, and premium sports like Emirates FA Cup, La Liga, Bundesliga, Wrestling. What's more exciting? We have the most flexible payment options in Nigeria. Don't dull. Join us now for an exciting journey. Start time. Enjoy digital life. Welcome to Sokoto on Nationwide. 23 persons have lost their lives to gastroenteritis in Sokoto State. Commission, State Commissioner of Health, Dr. Muhammad Ali Inami, stated this while briefing newsmen on the outbreak of gastroenteritis that hit 13 local government areas of the state. Sheikh Mohammed Betty completes the story. The Commissioner of Health, Sokoto State, Dr. Ali Enami, said since January this year, the state has been making efforts to curb the escalation of the gastroenteritis. As the rainy season progresses, the epidemic spread to 30 local government areas, with 265 persons infected and 23 persons lost their lives. The Commissioner said, God of our local government is the worst hit. They are strict to restrict movement. We are saying we should not visit the relation, but in this kind of situation where uh, the infection or the, the bacteria is highly contagious, it can be transmitted easily from contact uh, person to person. We need to also emphasize that. On COVID-19, the commissioner said as NYIC orientation came opened, 14 core members deployed to the state tested positive to the coronavirus and are currently at the isolation center receiving treatment. From last year to date, Sokoto State has had 787 confirmed cases of COVID-19. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Deti, NTA News. Flood has destroyed several houses and other valuables at Kotorkoshi Emirate in Bungudu local government area of Zamfara State. The incident followed a heavy downpour that lasted for about six hours. Halil Muhammad Uma has more. It was indeed a sad experience for residents of Kara area in Kotarkoshi Emirate as they wake up to see their houses and other properties being destroyed by flood. The incident followed a heavy downpour which lasted for about six hours, resulting in washing away several valuables, including animals, beddings, clothes, and food items, among others. Some victims who spoke with NTA News expressed sadness over the development, saying they could no longer stay in their houses, while appealing to the state government to to come to their aid by providing them with alternative place to relocate for safety of their lives and property. They also called for relief materials to resume normal life. The victims, however, attributed the flood to an existing bridge in the area which, according to them, is too narrow and does not allow free flow of water, stressing the need for a review of the project. In the meantime, the member representing Bungudu East constituency, Kabiru Magaji Kocharkoshi, has paid an assessment visit to the affected area where he sympathized with the victims and assured them of government's intervention. Now we fought it immediately, and I believe my governor will give emergency assistance to people that are affected. It could be recalled that similar flood had occurred in the area about a month ago, but the latest incidents appears to be more devastating, considering the extent of damage and high number of properties affected. In Gusau, Halil Muhammad Umar, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Lydia in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Many thanks, Asma'u. Experts on security matters have identified political interference as another major factor hampering the criminal justice system in Nigeria. Discussing the need for reform of law enforcement in Nigeria for the second consecutive day on Good Morning Nigeria, the experts stress the need to ensure that none it's above the law. Ekemini Williams has more. The general presumption is that everyone is equal under the law, and this is what law enforcement is anchored on in a democracy. However, in practice, things may be substantially different, as experts discuss law enforcement in Nigeria for the second consecutive day. This was one of the issues that came up as a canvassed 
the necessary reforms. Uh, even as a commissioner of police, for example, mm. you want to perform your duty, and somebody says, no, that man belongs to that party. That man belongs to that party. So we are operating in an atmosphere of uh, a lot of tension, uh, political uh, acrimony, and that you can easily be tagged to belong to one party. If I know for sure, if I do something that is uh, inimical to the society or to the law of the land, I know that I will be sanctioned accordingly. Definitely, it will serve as deterrence. They stressed the need to hold political interference in the law enforcement process and called for a reorientation of the security agencies as well as national reorientation for the citizen on the security architecture. I was a post secretary, as, I told, as you mentioned there now. They will come to your office say that I want so-so person to be the area commander and so-so area. I want so-so person to be the area and so -so. all this blah, blah. They will come and we need political orientation. IG cannot change all this issue because you will discover somebody can go and make it. even complain against IG that IG is this blah blah. You should remove him. You should do it. And when these politicians are talking now, you are not there to defend yourself. If we really have an effective strategic implementation plan within the period of five, six years, looking at these various critical areas of challenges, recruitment selection, training, promotion, uh, welfare. In the previous edition, experts had identified other factors such as a faulty recruitment process, low level of literacy and underfunding as hampering efficient law enforcement in Nigeria. In Abuja, Ekemini Williams, NTN News. Nigeria's sustainable agenda in transforming the education sector to a world standard is near fulfillment. This was the summary of discussions view on the NTA Current Affairs Program Tuesday Live. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that with commitment in funding the education system and the London Summit intervention, guests are optimistic of a promising future. The endorsement of 2021 Global Action for Quality Transformation of the Education Sector in 90 countries under a budget of $5 billion within a period of five years is wooing stakeholders' commitment. Key players in the Nigerian education sector are convinced that the intervention will breach the huge gap created by the prolonged neglect of the sector and meets future requirements. Let me first... Uh Congratulate our president for attending that global education summit. If he didn't attend, the visibility that is being given to funding education in Nigeria today will have been dimmed. The quality of those who program our children ought to improve because she, teachers themselves are programmers. So we must, by our own nature, configure them to be adequate for our system. I want to commend, you know, government, you know, efforts towards uh, developing higher education in Nigeria. Yes, we might not be where we're supposed to be, but there has been progress. Stakeholders say the paradigm shift should take holistic approach with participation of the private sector to enhance capacity and facilitate quality delivery of knowledge. The demand for education is so huge, no amount of money um, you are going to put in education that is going to be enough, particularly if you look at um, um, the demand from the sector. You need a lot of resources to maintain, to build new infrastructure, to maintain the existing ones. The impact of COVID-19 to the basic education uh, sector, as far as children were concerned, was that it increased redundancy of children, staying with nobody to attend to them, teachers are separated from the children, parents could not teach them. As Nigeria's engagement at the summit continues to provoke intellectual discourse, stakeholders are optimistic that it is never too late to get it right. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News. The drive of the federal government towards lifting millions of Nigerians out of poverty and creating millions of jobs is receiving a boost as academic institutions are already keying into entrepreneurial skills development for students to be self-reliant and employers of labor after school. This was noted at the maiden exhibition of the locally made products 
by final year students of the Department of Entrepreneurship Development, Nasrawa State University, Kefi. Suraj Abdullahi has more. The idea of entrepreneurship is to not new trend globally as it is one of the major stimulants of economic growth and job creation. Recently, Nigeria witnessed rise in the number of small and medium enterprises supported by government's initiative and social investment programs which deepen the values in the entrepreneurship culture. Nasrawa State University kept was first among the committee of universities to establish entrepreneurship development department, not only on the premise of academic expansion, but also to add value to the nation's economic development by producing students with entrepreneurial skills. This called for the maiden exhibition of the students' main products organized by the Department of Entrepreneurship Development, where different items were displayed. This is the first university that has entrepreneurship center in this part of the country. So it tells you that the Nazareth State University is leading. We don't want students to, after graduation, to lack what to do. So after graduation, they are going to be self-reliant and they are going to be employers of labor themselves. We teach students reality, and the reality is that they should go into practicals of different skills of their own choice. The students noted that the skills acquired will not only make them self-reliant, but also employers of labor, as well as creators of wealth. The Department of Entrepreneurship, have, to a large extent, shaped the ideology and the orientation of the students to think differently. To have a life after these uh, studies. The exhibition is an annual event. From Kafi Suraj Abdullahi, NTA News. Quite impressive from Lafia there. The Speaker House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, has congratulated the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Emefele, on his 60th birthday. Bajabia Mila, in a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Larry Lassisi, said Emefele is one Nigerian that has been serving his country diligently and committedly as the Governor of the Apex Bank. The speaker said MFLA's track records are there for all to see, noting that Nigeria and Nigerians are proud of him as they wish to celebrate many more years in good health. And now to politics. A member, Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party, former Senator Joy Emodi, has defected from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress. The chairman, APC caretaker, Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, and Yobe State Governor, May Malabuni, received the decampi in Abuja. In a statement, Maman Mohammed, Director General Press and Media to Governor May Malabuni, the former lawmaker in Modi said she is convinced that the future of a prosperous and united Nigeria lies in the APC and described the party's leadership as sincere and genuinely committed to a united Nigeria that has plans for the future generation. The former legislator assured the party of her loyalty and her support to the party in view of the APC-led federal government that is working for the Southeast, the zone she represents, the statement added. Meanwhile, Taraba State APC ward congresses have been concluded across the 168 wards of the state though there were some hitches in the conduct of the Congress in the remote local government areas, the exercise was peaceful as confirmed by the state chairman of the party. Correspondent Jibril Musa completes the story. The said what Congress's committee members headed by the Poma Kebu State Governor was received by the APC officials on arrival and assured of support for a successful execution of their assignment. If you decide to do a consensus, or you decide to go to election, whatever you take will do what you want us to do. The APC Congress, which was agreed to be conducted through consensus, was carried out accordingly in some words. However, wards where members did not reach a consensus, card carry members queued up and elected their executives as resolved by the party stakeholders. We are a party guided by a constitution and guideline. The, both the Constitution and the guidelines says if there is any disagreement in any, at any point of the election, and if somebody buys form, 
This should allow him to contest. Following the successful completion of the Congresses across the 168 wards of the state, the party leadership appealed to members to extend same in the subsequent Congress for the success of APC in Traba State. In Jalingo, Jibril Musa, NTA News. Still on politics, the National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party arose from a crucial meeting where it reviewed the state of the party with a view to creating an atmosphere that will continue to engender stability within the party. The party spokesperson, Kola Ologwandion, in a statement says, the NWC assures that it has already activated the internal conflict resolution mechanism of the party to ensure amicable resolution of all issues. It adds that the NWC further assures all members of the party that it is taking urgent steps to ensure decisions that will strengthen the party for the task ahead and urges all members to remain calm while assuring that the PDP remains stable as it works with the majority of Nigerians towards a better future. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party's Governors Forum says it has received with regret and sadness the recent rumblings in the party. A statement by the chairman of the forum and governor of Sakwato State, Aminu Waziri Tamwell, calls on all members of the party and stakeholders to remain calm in the face of developments. It pleads with all aggrieved persons and those with the interests of the PDP at heart to be patient as efforts are being made in consultation with members of the PDP Board of Trustees and other key players to resolve all contending issues. To this end, the PDP Governors Forum has scheduled an emergency meeting to discuss the affairs of the party and the way forward. Mina is waiting Nenugu with our next set of reports. Hello, Mina. Hello, dear. Good evening and welcome to Enugu. The management and staff of the NTA Enugu Network Center has appealed to the Enugu State Governor Ifayu Gwai to intervene on the matter of land encroachment by some yet to be identified persons on a land belonging to the NTA, where the NTA Enugu Network Center is located along Independence Layout Enugu. Shine Woye now reports. These are the staff of the NTA Enugu Network Center expressing their anger over the encroachment of the land belonging to the NTA. The management and staff woke up this Tuesday and discovered that some persons broke through the fence covering the land, removed the beacons, excavated about 33,320 square meters of the land, and were about erecting a building. Some members of the staff expressed their anger on the situation and appealed to the Enugu State Governor, Ifan Yugwani, to please intervene on the matter. Uh, this is very, very disheartening. It just came to our knowledge, and we thought it was a joke. But only for us to come here and see that they have already started uh, uh, having their foundation done. How can you come to a federal establishment without any uh, question? You just come here to claim over 33,000 feet square of uh, land. We are not happy because we are the workers of NTA. We are not, very, we are not happy about this. Yes. So we are actually looking at it and we are, we are, we are calling the government of Enugu State to come and look at this thing. Because there is no way we can be who can be here and allow people to come and steal what belongs to us. It's not possible. While the management and staff were about to return to their duty posts, about four men suspected to be the trespassers were seen coming towards the encroached land. And on sighting NTA camera lens, they turned back, entered their vehicles, and drove off. This is not the first time attempts have been made to illegally take some parts of this particular land belonging to the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. And that is why the management and staff are appealing that people take their eyes off the land. In Enugu, Chineyangoye, NTN News. Any money spent in the development of the education sector and promotion of technology-based innovations is a worthy investment. Governor Ifai Ugwai of Enugu State stated this at a ceremony where he awarded scholarships to university level of two young inventors who locally manufactured a helicopter a jet fighter, and an MP3 radio set. Susan Aze has details. In 
this ceremony to appreciate two young inventors, Master Emmanuel Chuku of Government Technical College in Soka, who manufactured a helicopter and a jet fighter, and Master Chukwe Buka Udoye of Government Technical College in Ugu, who produced an MP3 radio set. Governor Uguani is excited that investments by his administration in the education sector is yielding dividends. I told myself, if carton can turn like that, what if I bring a, a plastic and, and place it on the fire? This is a radio, and as a radio, it can pick sessions in any The governor announced scholarships for both boys up to university level, and a 1 million Naira cash gift for Master Chuku, who made the aircrafts, and 500,000 Naira for Master Udoye, who manufactured the radio, to aid them in advancing their inventions. The governor also kick-started arrangements for the approval by the state executive, 100 million Naira for the construction of more classroom blocks in technical colleges in the state, 50 million Naira for construction of technical workshops at GTC in Soka and Enugu, and also plans for the recruitment of more technical teachers. Like me, I'm the happiest mother on earth today. Master Emmanuel Chuku hails from Nenwe, a near local government area of Enugu State, while Chukwe Buka Udoye is from Agwata in Anambra State. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. That's it from Enigo Nationwide continues with Frama and Joss after this commercial break. A new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively with Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State. Since assuming office, our rescue administration has pursued the path of peace and reconciliation and restored confidence among people of different ethnic, religious, and political persuasions. Peace is back on the plateau. We are building world-class infrastructure in roads and opening up opportunities for innovation. The edition is a compendium of mind-blowing stories for your reading pleasure, ranging from entertainment, economy, sports, media, politics, family, and lots more. Pick up a copy and keep abreast with issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative and competent. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. Dear compatriots, our country can be as great as we want. Let us all commit ourselves to its greatness. We must be willing to set aside our differences, unite and stay as one. In our expansive landmass, human and material resources, and plurality lies our strength. Let our challenges lead us to rediscover our common ground, and together, let's find solutions. This will take some time, so it requires patience, tolerance, and forgiveness from every one of us. Let all hands come on deck to protect and transform our country. Let us unite and see each other, not as adversaries, but as brothers and sisters. Together, we can build a better Nigeria for ourselves and for the next generations. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, NOA, with support from Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. The future belongs to those who leverage on digital innovations. Digital PS International presents Digitest Online 2021, an online summer camp that brings ages 8 to 18 together across Nigeria, Canada, US, and more countries. Team Digital Skills Pathway to Prosperity. Date 8 to 16 August 2021. At Digitest, kids and teens will unearth their potential to create digital products with possibilities of making profits online. Participation would be virtual with few physical non residential at the Digitest Center Abuja and we all enjoy a level playing field to compete with students across the globe. Lots of prizes to be won. Give your kids an opportunity of a lifetime today for only 5,000 Naira for virtual and 20,000 Naira for physical. To register, visit our website at www.digitalpeers.org slash digitest online 2021 or call 080-7782-3307 or 
is nationwide and welcome to JOS. Governor Simon Lalong has expressed concern over the attack in Basa and Riom local government areas and directed security agencies in the state to fish out perpetrators of the dastardly act. This was when he convened an emergency state security council meeting in JOS. Priscilla Gumnan reports. After more than three hours of deliberations behind closed doors, the Security Council meeting rose with resolutions on best ways to tackle the recurring attacks in parts of communities in Basa and Riom local government areas. Plato State Commissioner of Police, while addressing newsmen on the outcome of the security meeting, gives the number of casualties recorded in the attacks. At Jebu Miango, on that night, five uh, people were killed and about 85 buildings burnt. Um, the attacks continued at um, uh, Tambora in a uh, real local government area. Uh, 12 people were killed there, unfortunately, and some houses destroyed. We lost some security personnel in the attack at Mayanga and at Rium. While assuring citizens that security has been fully deployed to safeguard lives and property, he says the directives of the government will be swiftly carried out to ensure criminals of the acts are brought to justice. There are records of leaders that are on bail from government temporarily, and some of them have been fingered in these present attacks. Nobody will be spared. Governor Simon Lalong sympathized with the victims and ordered immediate assessment of the humanitarian needs and assistance to affected people by the Plateau State Emergency Management Agency. In Joss, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. Governor Simon Lalong says his administration will reposition education sector in view of the critical role it plays in the transform transformation of the society. This was while addressing members of the Governing Council of Plaza State University, Bokos. Zere Moon reports. The Governing Council members, led by the Chairman, Professor Obiora Ike, were at the government house to appreciate the governor for giving them the opportunity to serve humanity. They commended Governor Lalong's efforts at ensuring that education in Plata State is adequately prioritized. We've taken off, we've had our first meetings, we've received an overview of the historical development of the university since its inception. It is one of the few universities in Nigeria that was founded and started at the permanent site. But I appreciate you for these things which you are doing. And we are proud to associate with this philosophy of human capital development. Governor Lalong pledged to do all within his power to sustain the interventions in the education sector. Consider those that we are going to work for you. I want to assure you that none of them is going to uh, betray the trust. They are very capable people. I've worked with almost all of them. They work in government, they have served the state. They are so patriotic about this institution because together with almost all of them, we started this institution when I was a speaker. The state university operated for two years without a governing council. In JOS, Zen Redding Moon, NTA News. That's it from JOS. Nationwide continues with Lydia in Abuja. Thank you, Frama. The federal government will no longer tolerate all unsustainable disposal of waste in Nigeria. And as such, a roadmap of extended producer responsibility is being drawn by stakeholders to aid the nation in enforcing global action against unsustainable disposal systems. Ikechuku Ndukwe reports. Tenza, Ubo, and Olufonto Borofis are business executives. They have been waiting for a day for the national dialogue on the implementation of the national environmental regulations, especially the extended producer responsibility program. The plastic bottle is a packaging that the company has used to sell you water. So the companies have to make plans in their product pricing and their product planning stages on how to mop up these plastic bottles from our environment. Well, it's part of the, you know, this new green growth um, that is happening, not just even Nigeria, but globally. And Nigeria needs to, you know, be strategic and um, be part of that, that global trend. This 
warm welcome for the Honorable Minister of State Environment, Sharon E. Kazo, underscores the importance the National Environmental Standards and Regulatory Agency, NEDRA, places on ensuring sustainable disposal system in Nigeria and its benefits. Most of the waste are generated by households, artisans, and traders, which litter the immediate surroundings. The above scenario informed government to introduce policies and programs aimed at halting the devastation of the environment. The federal government recognizes the importance of EPR, and we have endorsed the efforts of NESRA to facilitate the implementation of the scheme. Once the blueprint is drawn, Captain of Industries will be responsible for disposal of their products in line with global action against unsustainable environment. In Abuja, Ikechukundukwe, NT News. The Emir of Maru in Zamfara State, Alhaji Abubakar Gado Megiri, has described the National Homegrown Feeding Program as one of the best initiatives of President Muhammad Buhari led administration which have direct bearing on the lives of people at the grassroots. The monarch who made the remarks while receiving a monitoring team from the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development at his palace said, the initiative has significantly increased pupils' enrollment across the Emirate. Sadia Abubakar Tino has more. The Federal Ministry for Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development recently embarked upon a biometric enumeration of peoples on national homegrown feeding program across the country. A team from the ministry was in Zamfara State to monitor the revalidation exercise currently being conducted in more than 1,470 public primary schools across the 14 local government areas of the state. The team leader who monitored the exercise at some primary schools in Gusau and Maru local government areas of the state maintained that it is aimed at improving the quality of data with a view to scaling up the number of beneficiaries in line with the directive of President Muhammadu Buhari. The federal government is targeting the increment of 14 million pupils into the program. 250,000 are already enrolled in Zafara State. We met all the Olamas, religious leaders, youth leaders, parents, guardians, and all caregivers across the set, informing them about the importance of this validation exercise of the enumerating, enumerating pupils, schools, cook uh, in the set. The team was at the Emmy of Maru's Palace, where the royal father, Alhaji Abakar Gadomaygari, applauded the federal government for initiating the national homegrown feeding program, which he observed has significantly increased people's enrollment in the Emirate and the state at large. NTA News, however, observed that there was low turnout of people in the schools monitored. The problem with the health teachers attributed to non resumption of some of the students after the last Eid al Kabir break. In Gusau, Sadia Abu Bakar Tino, NTA News. The Ministry of Women Affairs has continued to reach out to newborns and those with health challenges in fulfillment of its mandate. The latest are a group of children who were at the Ministry for a formal presentation of monetary assistance. Momso Demian Dati reports. It's not just about women, but also their families, especially children, whom the Ministry of Women Affairs see as their responsibility. Strengthen the role of the family in improving the status of... On this occasion, newborn and those with health challenges are receiving support from the Ministry, the first in the second quarter. Because our children are our future. She had the sign of joint this, which is the yellow eyes. When we went to the hospital, they kept telling us it was joint this, it was clear. After some months, they discovered it was a liver problem. In fact, at this stage, it's just, they said it's liver transplant she needs. The pediatrician said she cannot stay up to two years with this ailment. You know, there's this little or no hope that always comes from um, places like this. But to be very honest, with this, I feel there's need to applaud government. From day one to the end, to the day they came out, I am. Uh, at the point, I knew I needed help, so I, uh, that idea just came to my head that why not talk to a bigger mommy that, that can help, so I now had to reach out. 
to the minister. And she's so kind, she, I got a reply to come. The director of child development represented the Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Talon. We may not be able to give them the full support, but from the little that we have, we felt that there is need for us to assist the little baby. And we are hoping that other government agencies, other philanthropists, and other corporate organizations will also heed the call to assist children who are in need. In the interest of enabling the Nigerian child to actualize full potentials, the ministry says it will go all the way. Momso Damien Dati, NTA News. And that report concludes nationwide. Remember, NTA's fight against rape and rapists is still on. I'm Lydia Odidiochi. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye.